What's up, everybody? All right, a couple weeks have passed since WWDC 24, when Apple unveiled a lot of their new software that's coming out later this year. And I've been using pretty much all of these betas since they were released on June 10th. That's iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, Sequoia, uh, Watch OS, TV OS. The list just goes on. I've been trying all of these and I wanna give you my thoughts. Now, I'm not gonna do one of those detailed videos where we go through every single change on every single platform. So if you're looking for that, I point you to Brandon Butch or Zolotech. They do a very thorough job and they don't miss a thing. So check those out if that's what you're looking for. Instead, I wanna talk about the things that have had the biggest impact on the way that I use these devices and the things that I think you will like most about these new software updates. Sure, in the last four years or so, Apple has had some new updates come out like they do every year, but even the things that they were calling the big updates over the last few years, AKA the action button on the iPhone 15 Pro, didn't really change the way that I use my device on a day-to-day -day basis. But ever since I installed specifically iOS, but a lot of these different betas over the last few weeks, literally every single time that I look at my device, it's a completely different experience than it was just a month ago. So those are the things that I wanna talk about today. And I know it's not out yet, but at the end of this video, we'll talk a little bit about Apple intelligence. So if you're curious about that, stick around. But what we're gonna do right now is get into it, and we're gonna start with iOS 18 kind of iPad OS 18 because a lot of it still applies, but mostly iOS 18. And the number one biggest update for me by far is the home screen customization. Now this was one of the things that held me off from switching to Apple for the longest time. I would always just go back to, you can customize so much more on your Android phone and make it yours. Make it exactly how you want it, specifically as it relates to things on the home screen, the widgets, the layout, the colors, uh, all those sorts of things. But now in iOS 18, not only can you customize the layout of the different icons, Apple actually released dark mode icons and they created this feature where you can actually tint the different icons into whatever different color you choose. There's this little eyedropper that you can select to pinpoint a location on your, on your wallpaper and use that color as the overall tint for your icons. It's a great idea in theory. Right now it doesn't really work all that great. In fact, a lot of people are using it and like ruining their home screens as Marquez Brownlee so artfully put it, but it is great that Apple is giving you the ability to do this if you so choose. And hopefully it's foreshadowing kind of a change in Apple's mentality of allowing us to customize our devices a little bit more than we've been able to do in the past. The second thing is going to be the updated control center. Now I'm hesitant to call it a redesigned control center because it really still kind of looks the same with the exception of now we have rounded buttons instead of square buttons, but overall, the appearance of it's the same, but the function is way better. You can add tons of different controls to it. And not only that, there's different pages now that you can swipe through to get to different functions. For instance, a media page where you can select your different speaker groups, your different media devices that you have in the house, and you can control all your media here from the control center. Also, if you use Apple HomeKit, there's gonna be a page where you can show all of your HomeKit devices and control those directly from the control center. There's also a wireless connections page where you can look at all your different connections easily. And there's just a lot of functionality here that's great. Again, it kind of looks the same, but it functions way better than it used to. So the updated control center is definitely a huge plus. And when I'm looking back at all these features, honestly, those are probably the biggest two that I actually see on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a whole bunch of other features that are incorporated into the new iOS 18, things like being able to hide and lock different apps. I don't really use those on a day-to-day -day basis. There are also a bunch of different updates to the native Apple apps that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but I wanna cover the actual operating systems first, and these apps, they function the same and the updates function the same across all the different operating systems. So we're gonna to touch on those a little bit later. The one app that I do wanna mention specifically for the iPhone in this iOS 18 update is actually the calendar app. Going back to the previous iOS, if you looked at the calendar month view, which is usually the calendar that I look at. It's the month view. I wanna see kind of what my month is and I wanna plan ahead. If you look at the previous version and you looked at the month view, you would have no idea what your month actually looks like. Any day that has an event on it literally just shows up as a dot. This has always been a huge issue of mine and in iOS 18, they finally updated this. So now you have the ability to zoom in and out on that monthly view and actually show all the events that you have on an individual day in the month view calendar. Now this is huge for me, and it actually has switched me from using Google Calendar over to the Apple Calendar app, which for me, honestly, is a huge change in my daily workflow. 
And this is something that I notice every day. And of course, it's thanks to the iOS 18 updates. Now I'm working on an entire video comparing all the most popular calendar apps out there. By the time you're watching this, it may be already out. So if it is, I'll link it somewhere. But if it's not, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you don't miss it when that one comes out. Now all the things that I just mentioned are actually also updated on iPad OS, but they didn't add anything else to iPad OS. Yeah, there's math notes, but that's also available on your phone. And honestly, I think it's a huge slap in the face to all the people that just went out and bought the new M4 iPad Pros, expecting there to be some huge update here, but there isn't. I just can't believe that Apple would actually release a new iPad Pro with an M4 chip in it, which is their most advanced and newest chip in any device that they've ever made. And they literally released a software that has absolutely nothing to do or can't even use that M4 chip in any meaningful capacity. Now I did make a video about the state of the iPad a while back, and I was hoping that this WWDC and the new software updates would kind of make that video outdated, but honestly, it's still as relevant today as ever before. So check that one out here. Next, let's dive into Watch OS 11. There's not a huge amount of features here, but there are some welcome changes that are worth mentioning. So one of the biggest fundamental differences in this Watch OS versus the previous one is a new metric or a new stat that Apple is calling the effort level. And this is a new data point that's associated with each of your workouts, and it's basically Apple's take on how hard was your workout on a scale from one to 10. Now you may be wondering, okay, well that's great, but what does it mean to have a rating of my workouts on a scale of one to 10? Well, what Apple's doing now is they're combining that data point with the durations of your workout to create something that's the next item on the list. So Apple is calling this new metric the training load, which compares your recent workouts to the average of how hard your workouts were over the last 14 days. Now this can be very beneficial for somebody who's training for an event, a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, or something like that, because you wanna have steady training growth, but you don't wanna overexert yourself and overwork out so that you're actually hurting yourself in the long run. The next item for watchOS is a new app called Vitals. And what Vitals is, is a new app that tracks different metrics over time and compares those to your averages while you sleep. So these are things that are, are more health related, not workout related. So you can see maybe something's going on. Um, let's get an update. What can we do about this? Let's fix it. So now let's go over to the computer and we'll check out Mac OS Sequoia. All right, so here we are back at the computer and for Mac OS, there's really only one thing that I can think of and that's their new window management system that Apple is calling tiling. Now this is where you can snap windows to different parts of the screen, just like you've been able to do in windows since like 2009, AKA you drag a window to the left side of the screen and fills up the left. You drag a window to the right side of the screen and fills up the right. You drag it to the top, fills up the whole thing or you can do different quarters, do four different windows, three, take your pick. There's different ways to do this. You can either drag it to the side of the screen or you can actually hover over the maximize button and it'll give you the different options that you can choose from. So when I switched over to Mac back in 2020, this was by far my biggest gripe about Mac OS was the window management. I even had to download a third party app called Rectangle to give me this functionality. So thank you for your services over the last few years, Rectangle, but your services will no longer be needed. Now I do wanna mention some things that are similar across all of the different operating systems, and these have to do with a lot of the apps, the native Apple apps that were updated and released in these new updates. Now, there's a ton of different updates out there. I'm only gonna to touch on the ones that I see on a day-to-day -day basis, and that have actually affected how I use my devices. The first one is gonna be in Safari, and there's a couple different new features here, the first of which is called Reader. So when you're looking at a website and it's kind of an article based website, whether it's news or uh, some sort of story, there's a button that pops up as part of the address bar and it takes you to a little menu and you can choose the reader option. And what this does is it strips away all the formatting of the website and it basically strips it down to just a bare article with the images associated with it. Similar to this is actually something that they're calling viewer which will extract a video out of a website. So you don't have to view it embedded in the website itself. You can actually just watch the video by itself. And a third feature that's in Safari now is something that's called highlights. And honestly, I haven't been able to get this to work yet, but what it's supposed to do is find relevant information like addresses or phone numbers and highlight that to you so that you don't have to necessarily go copy and paste the address into Apple Maps to get directions to it. 
or things along those lines. But shoot me a note in the comments if you've been able to figure out how to get this to work because I've been on a ton of different websites and it's not once popped up for me. And yes, I do have the setting enabled. So the next one is called Passwords, and this is a new app that got downloaded onto all my different devices. Really, it's just a password manager, and I don't see it acting any different than iCloud Keychain did in the past, but it's a new app now, so I guess that makes it easier and cool, I guess. So the next one is gonna be the Photos app. And there's a lot of different changes here, and honestly, they've taken a lot of getting used to, but I think overall, they're for the better. So in the previous Photos app, down in the bottom, you had a navigation bar where you could pick from your library, different albums, for you, etc., things like these. And now, rather than having a navigation bar, you get to all these different things by swiping. So when you're at the main page, you can swipe left and right, to get to different customizable pages that you want, whether it's an album or favorites or basically whatever you choose. And if you swipe down, then you can get to a list of all your different categories of photos, whether that's screenshots, screen recordings, favorites again, different albums, and a lot of different other options. And again, you can customize this list in the different order that you want to make it exactly how you want this Photos app to feel. So the last one that I'm gonna talk about is the Messages app. And the reason that I'm gonna to touch on this one last is well, a lot of the features that are in the update you can't really use now because they're not compatible with people that aren't on the iOS 18 beta. But there's a lot of cool things here. A lot of it's regarding formatting, and that's when you can actually do different text effects on individual words within text. So you get different uh, animation options. You get bold, underline, italicized, strike through. You get a ton of different formatting options now. And another thing that I didn't know that this is what this was called, but I guess it's tap backs if I'm remembering correctly, but that's when you push and hold on a text message and you can do like a reaction to it. You like it, you love it, you laugh at it, whatever. You can now actually do that with customizable emojis. So you can pretty much put whatever emoji you want on somebody else's message. It's kind of cool. I guess it, it's not really that critical, but I definitely think that it'll open up some creativity and some group chats at the very least. Now let's talk about some upcoming changes that we can expect in the fall or in the future. The first one's gonna be iPhone mirroring. And this is an app that's gonna show up on your Mac that lets you control your phone from your computer. It's literally gonna be an icon of your phone and it's gonna pop up on your computer and you can do everything exactly like you would on your phone. Your notifications are gonna come through on your Mac and it's gonna be a really cool feature that you don't even have to unlock your phone. It can be in a bag, upstairs, anywhere else and you get to control it from your Mac. The next one is gonna be some major updates to the Mail app. And I just did an entire video on what's the best email app to use, and Apple Mail came by far at the bottom of the list. And that's because it's so outdated, it doesn't look good, it just doesn't feel fun to use. But what they're gonna do now is something similar to what Google did, which is auto-categorize your emails into different inboxes, and these inboxes are gonna have different colors associated with it, so it's definitely gonna refresh the Mail app and hopefully get a lot of people to actually use it rather than Gmail or Outlook as I mentioned in that previous video, which you can check out here. And lastly, I'm just gonna to touch very briefly on Apple Intelligence. It deserves its own video entirely, and honestly, I don't have the time to do that. So check out any of the other million videos that are on YouTube about Apple Intelligence if you want the details. But I think that Apple's take on AI is actually a great one in that they're not trying to outdo all the other AI systems that are out there, like ChatGPT, for instance. What they're trying to do is create an assistant that will help you and your phone interact better. So you don't necessarily have to use your hands, your fingers. Apple Intelligence will be able to do the things that you wanna do on your phone, and for everything else, it's gonna to connect to ChatGPT. So the privacy thing is a little bit wishy-washy right now, but they're ensuring that none of your data is passed outside of Apple without your express permission. Only time will tell, but that's what they're saying. Overall, I do think this WWDC was the biggest in years probably over a decade. They made tons of changes that people have been requesting for a very long time. More customization on iOS, better window management on Mac, more fitness and training functionality on the watch. Unfortunately, iPad got the short end of the stick and they basically got jack shit. The other one that I didn't touch on was tvOS and that's, well, that's because there's really no changes to that either, at least that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.